Thanks for joining me. I'm Don Ney. I want you to know something. We need to talk about, you know, this no interest thing. And also we've got to talk about how to get an offer written. What you'll find out most often is that the reason that a person that does not buy property or the reason that a person is unable to make a deal is because deals aren't actually found. Deals are created. Deals are created by the information that you're able to gather. And that means that you're a wealth creator. And it's interesting because people will say, well, you're not going to take $1,000 and you can do this anywhere in the country. I said, well, yes, of course you can. Because it's not even about the $1,000 or the $100. I buy $100 houses on a regular basis because that becomes my down payment for sealing the deal. But the reality is that's a no money down deal. It's all done. It may just get closed and I never used any money whatsoever. But the $100 is what I now hand to the seller because I give them my normal down payment, which is a handshake. But at the same time, I give them the $100 so it seals the deal with an economic means that escrow and title can recognize as being compensation. And instead of having explained to them the laws of what compensation is and contract issues, we just say, look, here's 100 bucks. That ends it all. It's still a good deal or I'm going to be doing it. Okay? That's really how we want to approach buying a property. Is that if I would buy this for $100, would I take it? But if you wouldn't put $100 on it, don't take it. Don't take it. But what we'll find is most houses don't get purchased. Why? Well, I'll tell you something. After writing more than 10,000 offers, which most were never accepted, I know how to write an offer. Obviously not well enough, because to write that many not accepted means I'm doing something wrong. But I did know how to write an offer. Because I'll ask a person, like I say, well, how many houses do you own? And they'll say, I own one, or I want to buy my first one, or my, I'm trying to get my second one, or me and my partner are going in to buy one together. Uh, we don't have a down payment, or we don't want to, we just want to know how to do it more creative to earn more money for ourselves. And I got a specific class for that. But right now, we're just talking about buying. Okay, we say, well, let me ask you something. How many offers have you written so far this month, this week, or this day? And you're going to find out, well, I haven't found the right property yet, so I haven't written any offers. What do you mean you haven't found the right property? You've got to create the right property, and you create it by having all the right elements wrong, and you create it by also knowing how to write an offer. And very simpler, simply, you first have to establish that you're the buyer. Someone else is the seller, and you want this property for a specific purpose. If you don't have a specific purpose for the property, why are you buying it in the first place? Why would you buy it? Just to hold it up like a piece of art and say, look what I got. I own a Picasso. I have no clue what he painted, but it's got his name on it, therefore I own it. You know, that's, that's okay. That can satisfy a lot of things that you have inside you that need that personal appreciation. But really, why do you want to buy the house? Because you want to provide somebody with a home? Somebody you know or somebody else? Maybe yourself? Because you want to have tax deductions or you want to have, you know, some place to hang your hat on a regular basis and you want a place to plant a tree and put your flowers in and check your mail and let the dog run around and paint every now and then and enjoy the weather and the change and the growth of the environment? Of course, these are all great things, but look, you got to always need shelter so you might as well focus on it. You're always going to need food, you're always going to need shelter, and you're always going to need clothing. You know, that's what the Creator said. So I decided we're going to go after the shelter aspect because we've got the most knowledge in it and we've had the most hard knocks in it. Hard knocks. Hard knocks. So why would you want to have those same knocks when I can tell you there's another way of doing it? I will tell you this. It's unfortunate, but it's a byproduct of the success of our business. Many, however, not a lot, but many, professional house buyers, and many, but not a lot, real estate professionals that are agents or brokers don't like the information I'm going to share with you. They don't like the fact I'm sharing it because it's true, and you can do it. I was talking to a realtor the other day, well, actually a few months ago, actually a real estate broker up in a small town in Merced, and I said, you know, you, you, you're a real estate broker. I said, uh, why are you not out there just buying the property? You know where they're at. Why are you just trying to earn the commission? Why do you just want to earn a commission? Why don't you go out there and buy it and fix it up and keep it yourself and rent it out? And he goes, I don't want to earn any property. And I said, what do you mean? He goes, I don't want to earn it. That's a lot of work. He goes, that's for the investors and that's for those other guys. He goes, I just want to earn a commission. I don't care what their deal is. 
And I was like, wow. <laughs> they just flat out came out and said, I don't care what their deal is. My job is to get a commission by connecting a buyer with a seller. And when he said that, it let me know that he doesn't care about me. He doesn't care about you. He cares about earning a commission so he can make his car payment or his house payment and keep his wife and family happy, which is great. But let me say this. If I have an ability to go out and buy a piece of property, let's say that piece of property, and in some of the ones areas I buy, that's expensive. Say I buy a property for $200,000 and I put cash in that deal. Cash, $200,000. now. We're not talking, you know, borrowing money or anything. Just, here's cash money. But out of that cash money, i got to give that real estate agent a typical commission of around 6%, which in my mind is $12,000. That's $1,000 a month for a whole year, and my cash flow goes in his pocket for bringing me one house that I can do myself, and that's with cash. When I can buy that same house with virtually no cash without paying him any commission whatsoever and I can make my profit in it at the time I buy it on what my payment will be by how much I'm going to rent it for. So if again, if my payment turns out being $1,000 a month and I rent it for $1,500 a month, I'm making $500 a month in positive cash flow. Plus, I paid no commission to buy that property. And chances are, I have not only is it financed by the seller, but I was also able to buy it at a discount because I made certain elements of my deal fit his needs. And those have trade-offs in economic value. Example. I want to move to another area, and I don't know how to get there, and I don't know a mover, and they want $20,000 for me to do it. Yet I line up a U-Haul, a small insurance policy, and a few uh, day laborers that I'm able to get at the local Home Depot, and I, I, I hire a person for you know twelve dollars an hour to work uh, you know from the morning to dark to oversee them who speaks English and whatever other cultural language that is necessary, and I'm able to move those people out of their house into a truck and relocate them in their other house at my expense for approximately seven thousand dollars, and he's telling me that they got to give him twenty five thousand. I say, well, why don't you just give me fifty grand off the house and forget about the whole thing, and I'll put you in the next house. I mean, that means I'll move you in the next house. Do you know how many people say, no, I won't do that, but I'll split it with you and I'll do it for $25,000? Most all of them. Did you just see that happen right there? Did you just see yourself taking in $7,000 approximately cash investment? Cash now, investment into moving the person to get as much as a fifty dollars or $30,000 discount on the purchase price of the house? Which, by the way, you are paying to them their equity portion in the form of a payment substantially less than what you're going to rent that house for. And it's 100% principal reduction. Or don't do the deal. I once had a guy, he comes up to me and he goes, I'll tell you what. I'll agree to your deal, but I have to collect some kind of interest. And I say, hey man, I'm, I'm not a bank. I can't pay interest. You know, just give me the old, I'm not a bank, I don't pay interest. He goes, well, even my bank pays interest. And I said, well, what's your bank paying? And he said, well, they're, uh, well, gee, I don't know. And I said, well, let's look it up and see what they're paying. Now, you and I know what the banks are paying today. You know, 0 0.5, 0 0.75, not even 1% on your money anymore. And you just come right up at him and say, I'll tell you what. Whatever the bank's paying, I'll pay you, but I'll add it to the note. So how much are they paying? And he finds out they're paying them almost 1%, which is pretty good, I guess. And I says, okay, so... How much are you financing? How much is how much are you playing bank for in your portion? He goes, oh, he gives me the number. It's around a hundred thousand. I said, so in a year, that's going to be what a thousand dollars approximately. And he goes, oh, I'll carry the one divide by two. Yes. And I said, okay. So how long is it going to take me to pay this thing off if I just gave you, you know, five hundred dollars a month? And he says, well, you know, it's going to be 20, 20, 20 months, two hundred months. I said, well, how many years is that? And he goes, twenty five. I said, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll add another twenty thousand dollars to the whole deal and just forget it, leave it at that. No interest on it. I'll just put twenty thousand dollars more in the deal. How's that? He said, you got a deal. So I give you 120 instead of 100. But do you see how I'm talking? I'm just talking like two people talking. This sounds like sophisticated transactions. It's not. We're just two guys talking. So you write an offer means you write it. Tell them what you want to do. If you don't write it, you've got no chance. That's the secret of the universe. Write it or there's no chance to talk about it. And then it's just two guys talking 
And it depends on if it's financially and fiscally responsible for you to buy the property in the first place. That's your consciousness. If you don't know how to write it, don't worry about it, because we'll cover that too. Now that I have to do on a more formal basis, but absolutely, I use a little four-page, uncarboned, big 12 and 14 point type on my paper. And the fourth page is almost all just signature. So it's really a real short three page. I'm buying your house. Here's the deals the law says I got to do. And here's what I'm willing to pay you for. And here's how I'll give it to you. Do you agree or you don't agree? If you agree, you sign it, we're done. And we fill it out together. Very, very simple. Not a realtor, I'm a principal. And the people look at me and go, oh, then you're doing this deal for yourself. You say, absolutely, I'm going to pick it up, fix it up. I hope to make a lot of money on this someday. People are proud to know that you're not buying it to take advantage of them. You're buying to help solve their problem. And by that action, you hope to make a profit for it. Why not? Join me again. Thanks for listening. I'm Don Day. Bye.